situation of what my situation is when I make paintings. I One reason I think I am a painter, an artist, is because it is, a, at least the way I make paintings, it's a fairly solitary pursuit um, until I, you know, the work is done and then I share it with, with people who are kind enough to check it out, like you. So this is... Um, this is a little bit out of my comfort zone. You will appreciate that. I'm not a performer. Um, the, the paintings um, and my painting practice is very, very personal. Um, it really is how I exist in the world. If I don't paint for any extended period of time, uh, my husband, John, here in the front row will let me know that it's time to get in the studio because something's off. So it really is, um, it's, it's a way of sorting through problems. It's a way of um, accessing something uh, very, that's, that's beyond my mind. So the way that I work is um, I start, I just start. So I'll recently, like with all of these works, which are completed in the last two years, um, I typically start with paintings that are not stretched. So it's just uh, unprimed raw canvas. Uh, so it's completely open. The possibilities are completely open. And I just get started. So with most of these, um, what I do is I'll just lay it on the floor and I use a liquid textile color, which is very, it's, it's very watery, um, intensely pigmented paint, um, water-based, and I stain the canvas. And I just sort of, I'll pick a, a very general palette and let things flow as they will. And it's really not a part of the process that I can control at all, which is a great way to get started because ideally, I stay open in the process as long as I possibly can. I mean, until I decide that painting is finished, everything has to be up for grabs. And when the canvas isn't stretched, even the size is up for grabs. So the paintings can shrink or enlarge as I'm working on them. So I can just rip the canvas. I can make it smaller. I can rearrange those panels. Um, I can introduce uh, pieces of other paintings that didn't work out. So I, um, I'm very critical about my work in that, you know, I've been at I've been at it a really long time, and um, so I have a I have a certain confidence and an, a certain um, detachment also, so nothing is really that precious. So if something is really not working, if it's, if it's not worth the canvas that it's painted on, I have no problem ripping it up because inevitably there's gonna be an interesting passage in the painting that I can use somewhere else. So these paintings, as you can see, are largely collaged um, using that process that I that I just described. Um, so I, I titled the show Mining Memory because, well, it really is like an excavation. Um, I'm mining my experiences as a painter, as a person, um, and I'm mining my my unconscious, my subconscious, really. And that's what, that's why I paint. I mean, that's really that experience that I haven't figured out how to get that any other way. Um, there's a lot that's going on in this world right now that's nuts. This work is clearly not political. It's not about that. 
it's my refuge away from all of that. So when I'm painting, um, for people, I'm sure people have all kinds of pursuits here, including, I know there are a lot of artists. Um, if you meditate, if you just, if you exercise, if you go out into nature, whatever it is for you, for me, um, it is mostly painting. And so everything else falls away um, when the work is, is really happening. If, if I start to get a little bit, you know, it's, Painting's really hard. It's still, I mean, I feel like the more I do it, the harder it gets in some ways. Um, so if it's not, yeah, if it's not really working, I will just, if I start thinking about it too much and getting too precious, uh, and then I start kind of painting around things that are working so I can kind of preserve them. I mean, if I'm, if I'm not getting total joy, and if I'm starting to be kind of careful, the paintings really um, show that. Um, and so those things might eventually get shredded, who knows. Um, what else can I tell you? So this, this is interesting. You'll see that this is a little bit different. This is probably the most recent painting. So this, this um, technique that I've been using of collaging different pieces of canvas together. I'll work on the floor and then I'll put it up on the wall and I'll put it back down on the floor. And, you know, inevitably I'll turn it over and it can be quite beautiful. Those, you see those seams and the, the stained canvas that bleeds through. So it's all those accidents that you, that you can't control at all and are completely unexpected that have a certain beauty. They're really, it's like a, it's like your, your palette. If you're a painter, you know, it's, it's just sort of what happens and it's the most beautiful thing. Right? So anyway, with this one, the back, what I thought was the back was so interesting to me that I couldn't just put it up against the wall. I'm like, I need to do something with this other side. So uh, that's the reverse. Um, but this painting probably, and I, so I just began working on the back as well and decided to hang it off the wall, which I think is a direction I'm going to um, pursue further uh, because this, this is really interesting to me. It's not quite sculpture. It's a little bit, it's kind of like a diptych. So it's like a three-dimensional diptych that you walk around, which I think is really, I think it's really interesting. Um, and it shows you really how it's made, which is also what I'm interested in. It's very physical process oriented work. I'm not trying to hide anything about how they're made. It's very clear. Um, and I think that that, that, may, that shows the history of how it's made. And there are also all kinds of interesting little things, well, interesting to me, pieces of paper, different kinds of, I see in here, um, paper that I got when I was in China, um, tickets, all kinds of things that are, you know, the stuff is interesting just physically, but also it has for me a personal history. Um, what else can I tell you? I, I encourage people to ask questions. Yeah. 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 Well, I, I did. I was in China for three months, four years ago. And just before doing that, I had just started to um, work on panel, actually. Um, I'm really interested, like when I go to the city, I love looking at old aban abandoned walls or whatever that have posters and things that have been pulled off and the old staples and all of that kind of stuff. And so I had started to work on panel um, with a kind of a graffiti sensibility, but also, you know, I, I was working on panel because I could staple into it and just be very, very physical. It was very forgiving in that way. So when I went to China, um, they had all of these incredible papers and inks, of course, and I was completely unmoored. I mean, I've never been in such a f foreign place where I, you know, I was a freak. 
John was with me, he was my co-freak. Um, they People were great, but we really stood out. Where we were, there were not a lot of Westerners. And so it was a very, very intense time, um, emotionally as well. And as I mentioned earlier about the studio really being my kind of my sanctuary and a place where I can get right with myself, I did a lot of work there. Um, because I was, so, <laughs> I didn't know what was going on. So anyway, um, I was doing a lot of collage work on paper and with paper and was really doing, they were paper constructions really. And it was a, an incredibly fruitful period for me. And when I came back, um, I, I realized there are also practical considerations of paper. Um, you know, we need to sell things as artists and it's very expensive to, um, to frame paper pieces and I like to work large. So I thought that I would start working in a similar kind of way, but with a more dur durable medium and surface like canvas. And so that's really, you know, four years later where this work um, is still coming from, I think. And the more I work in this way, the more I can understand the language and what I can do with the pretty limited um, set of materials. I, I, I mean, I'm interested in the kind of that tension that happens with the, the build up of these surfaces. You can really feel that they're in some ways almost three dimensional, but they also have a, a sense of illusionistic space, which I think is really, I don't know, it's just sort of a language that's inside of me as a painter. It's something that I just, I don't set out to do it, but um, clearly it's, it's what I want to do. Could you mm -hmm. talk about your use of white? And especially when I was saying earlier that I was, saw your work on Eagle Street, the thing that always uh, jumped out at me was your use of white in your paintings. And so just talk about that a little mm -hmm. bit. I, I have no real idea of, because it's on, it seems a lot of times on top of just structurally, you know, yeah. it's coming on top of. Well, it's sort of the next thing that I do after that staining. Um, it's really clear in that, that painting on that back wall. So the first thing I did was that kind of that amorphous sort of deep space kind of gray background that is just the stained raw canvas and the next thing I did which is what I did with you know again it's developing that language that was one of the first paintings that I did using that technique I just um, I've been draw kind of drawing with tape so you do that sort of very amorphous deep space staining and then I go in with just masking tape and I and I draw basically with the masking tape and then I use gesso, which is just a white, it's basically a white acrylic primer. Um, and that sharp edge and that very opaque paint laid on top of that stained surface, just like immediately you get that sense of space. And then it's sort of back and forth from there, kind of breaking that down and building it back up, which most of these paintings have that have so that, that technique. So then you're retaining, if that's a middle step, then you're in the image that we're seeing, you kind of retain a lot of white. Yeah. Of it, as opposed to obliterating all that. Right. And what's interesting about that, that gesso is that it's like a masking. So if you, as I'm doing with this, um, the liquid textile paint, it, it behaves differently over, you know, it's just, it's exploration really with the materials that I'm using. I mean, I, I kind of want to be surprised by every painting that I make, which is why they're all different. I mean, if so I'm that, building so a language. Mm -hmm. uh, generates a lot of speed. Mm -hmm. you know, it's tremendous yeah. Once I start, I just want to get going with it. So I'm not, um, even though they can take a long, long time, like that painting took over two years, actually. I mean, it's not that I was working on it every day, but 
you know, I'll work on a painting and I'll get to a point and then I'll just sort of be, either I'll be stuck or uh, I'll think it's finished and I'll put it aside and then later I'll realize that it's not. But so that that's what happened with that painting and it really took over about over two years. But so in the meantime, while that's in the corner getting dusty, I'm working on something else and I, I discover something, I learn something, I, I get a window into something and so I can take that um, that information back to the next painting. So I often have a lot of different paintings going at the same time, because um, they're all sort of, you know, I'm figuring it out. I mean, I think I'll always be figuring it out. Once, as, if you're an artist, once you've got it all figured out, I think it's all, you know, why, why bother, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Point of view from your picture, right? Your kaleidoscope. A kaleidoscope, that's interesting. No, no, I don't. They're beautiful. I love kaleidoscopes, but that's, I like that association. That's very cool. Yeah, things sort of being refracted. And that's, again, that's sort of something that kind of happened. I mean, I see that with this. I, I feel like a sense of reflection in some ways. And that's, so that's, it was an accidental discovery that I'm now sort of more, deliberately pursuing in some paintings that I'm working on. So that's really how I move forward with my work is I, you know, stay open, let the accidents happen, learn something from them and go on, you know, go on using that to the next painting. The geometric uh, aspect to the painting kind of often alludes to this feeling of uh, architecture. Mm -hmm. And so like, as if we're moving through this urban space mm. uh, really quickly. Mm -hmm. And so that sense of glass mm -hmm. related to the kaleidoscope mm -hmm. can, I can I never quite caught on to that relationship before, but I see it in this moment. Uh, yeah, and it's cool because using that tape, you can really sort of make, well, you can make whatever shape you want, but you can also like really quickly, and in that painting, you can really see it too, make grids. And those, you know, they have associations with with urban urban architecture and, and cityscapes, yeah. Yeah, and that's, it's just sort of in me. So that's just a perfect example of, you know, like my graffiti, my interest in graffiti and, you know, the grit of the city and all that sort of thing. I don't set out to uh, make paintings that are about that, but that's just where I'm coming from. So if I'm being honest, it comes out in interesting ways. And sometimes I really appreciate when people talk to me about my work because they can see things that I don't necessarily see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One of the things that I really admire about um, Medium's paintings is your ability to create something that's probably mm -hmm. an accident and let it be, you mm -hmm. know, because I look at this painting and there's all this motion and energy in the middle, but then on the fringes, it's like this mysterious stuff that's just gorgeous and spreads out from Yeah, me. thanks. So, yeah, I, I think that that's a huge option. It's, it's a difficult thing. Well, and this is a, a perfect example. Like, this is a painting that um, I, I'm working with in a pretty small space right now, and I like to work large. So, um, Sometimes paintings will get to that point where, as I described earlier, that it's just like it's it, it's not done, but I'm stuck or whatever. And I, or you know, Thanksgiving happens, whatever. I roll it up, I put it away, and um, that happened with this painting. And I was absolutely sure that it wasn't finished. And I think I'm grateful that I gave it that time of rest and not working on it and like you know like pounding away at it because when I opened it back up, I thought, you know, the only thing I did was I added, so it was like, again, it was unstretched and it's all in different pieces. So this was not there and I wanted to stretch it. So I had to, I had to add another piece and this is from, you know, some things that I was messing around with and I thought, you know, that, that kind of works. That's interesting. I like that sort of haphazard quality. Again, like, you know, graffiti on city walls, it's like all kinds of different voices are at play there. Um, but sometimes it works, you know? I like those, I like those differences. 
in those juxtapositions of edges that don't, you know, that don't continue, that just sort of, they end and there's something interesting that happens in those places. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you talk about your influences? Who have been your mm. heroes and heroines? Oh, gosh. Well, I mean, I think I come from the abstract expressionist school, you know, I mean, those are really like foundational heroes for me, like, um, you know, Gustin and Joan Mitchell and de Kooning, and, you know, those people. And when they when I read about what they said about their process, it makes complete sense to me. So, you know, these are not those paintings, but I feel like the process is very similar in that sort of being open to that vulnerable place um, and being willing to just like step into the void and, you know, believe that it's just paint, right? <laughs> it, you know, it's, it's okay. Um, but it took a long time to get to that place because it, it is, it's ridiculously scary. Um, and now it's like um, some of my favorite painters are, are Jack Whitten and Mark Bradford, um, very, again, sort of process oriented, very, it's all about materiality and the, the beauty that comes out of that. But there's so many great painters right now. It's, it's rich. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and how do you see the white? Did you see it as a negative space or a positive space? The way that you describe the process is the same. And then you lay the weight down. It's almost an inversion of the process. It feels it feels like positive space to it me. It feels like positive mm. space, right? That's how it, it's not an explosion. It's an implosion of the sorts of yeah. positive negative flavor, right. so, uh, imagery, not imagery. Mm -hmm. And that's the play that makes it more than just active. It's, it's chaotic, crazy, explosive. Yeah, I mean, I kind of like that. They invite hopefully long looking like you. I mean, I, I looked at a painting that I it's not hanging here. I, I just did a residency at Mass Mocha, which was great. Um, and I, I just saw that painting again that I did very quickly when I was there. And I was like, I don't even know how I did that. Like, but I, I'm interested in paintings that make you stop and think, OK, like what came first and how like is that on top of that? Is that underneath that, you know? So, uh, yeah, I like that about these paintings. Mm -hmm. And what, what impact did that little studio you had in the corner that all shaped studio? Because it was a perfect The Eagle Street? Like, that was like, to see with these paintings, because somehow they reflected on the other space in the world. Yeah, so um, a few of these paintings. So that painting and then those, those two. And then that one, so like, you know, a handful of these I, I did um, when I had my studio on Eagle Street in North Adams when we first moved here. So I've been here about two years now. And um, yeah, it was, I don't know exactly how, it, I don't know how much they were inter influenced by that space, but it was really, it was great to be in that space mm -hmm. and when we had just started out here because I got to meet, you know, a lot of the people who are here. Um, tonight through through being in that sort of public um, streets street side you know storefront studio yeah but it was it's it's tough because it is uh, it, it was a, a fishbowl yeah. and <laughs> that was one thing about China it's like yeah people would just like it was open and people would just like a whole fam whole families would just come and just <laughs> And, you know, talk about lack of inspiration. It was like, ugh. So uh, I felt a little bit like that after a while uh, on Eagle Street. Yeah, yeah. You gotta be able to kind of forget that you're, that you're uh, in, a, in a public space. That's, that's challenging. Yeah. Bill, who wants to hear about that in their paintings? Light? Come on. I'm kidding. That's like the, <laughs> the highest compliment. 
No, light is tricky. I mean, white is tricky. Light, but there, you have different, it has different qualities. And sometimes it feels like space, and then sometimes it feels like a reflection of glass mm. sensation. And, it, it, and that's also set up by that dynamic of the staining uh, softness versus the hardness of the geometry. Right. Why did you go to China and what did you get from it? So, China wasn't ever a place that I dreamed of going necessarily, but it was just, it was an opportunity to, to do a residency and it just sort of fell in my lap. And so I, I jumped on the, on the opportunity and um, I'm actually hoping to go back. Um, I got so much from it. I mean, it's it's vast. I, I just barely, after three months, just barely scratched the surface. But I mean, I feel comfortable enough now that I feel like I could go back and just sort of like kind of get started even sooner. Do you know what I mean? Because I just feel a little bit more comfortable and I wouldn't be feeling quite so out of sorts. So this was outside of Shenzhen which is near Hong Kong, which is undergoing a lot, you know, there's a lot. It's difficult. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Have you spent any time in Italy? Oh my gosh, yes. Si, eh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I lived in Italy for two years and it's, um, if I could retire there, I would. It's one of my favorite places on the planet for sure. Why do you ask? Because that's the inspiration for any kind of thing. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Although there is, like, this one's called Visitation, and this one's called Fractured Angel. I mean, it's a stretch. But there is sort of this kind of winged thing happening. Again, it's just like, I, I, I'm just going with it. I, I don't know what it is. But, uh, yeah, I don't think these are Renaissance, totally. Yeah. But I do love Italy. Yeah. Good. Is that it? <laughs>